Hey, this is Mateo Lane. I'm Emma Wilman. And this is Inside the Closet. Inside the Closet. Welcome to Inside the <laughs> Welcome to Inside the Closet, a podcast with me, Emma Wilman, and the wonderful Hannah Mateo Gatsby. Lane. And the wonderful Mateo Lane. Mm-hmm. And normally he does the intro for obvious reasons. I have problems with tenses. But mm-hmm. today we're going to be discussing pop culture, including Nicki Minaj, Serena Williams, and a recent interview uh, Mateo and I gave that we have some um, thoughts on. You don't want to miss that. We catch up on our love lives. And Mateo will be in Boston performing this weekend, Thursday through Sunday. And I'm still out in LA with a bunch of tour dates coming up that I'll share with you guys soon. Enjoy the episode. Yay! We're back. Here we are. How you doing? Emma, I hate being far away from you. I know. It's like because you know what helps me when we do the podcast is when I get to see you or <laughs> totally. You know what I mean. So it sucks yeah. that we're still so goddamn far away from each other. You know what we should do is we should maybe try to do FaceTime while we're doing this because it helps with like timing too. You know what I mean? Yeah, but as many years this FaceTime never work. So I've been FaceTiming with the art therapist, and that helps. A little bit. Um, yeah, I FaceTime with PK. I'm thinking about going to visit him in Barcelona for a couple days before I go to Italy. But I'm like, am I taking way too much time off work, or should I be relaxing? When you take when you take time off, does it then make you more reinvigorated when you go do it? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I worry I'm going to be living under a bridge tomorrow, so I'm always afraid to take off work. That is literally my fear that I'm going to live under a bridge. Totally. I, um, well, I'm sure it would be the, uh, the most, the funniest bridge. Well, if I lose money, can I live with you? Yeah, absolutely. Would you care if like, Emma, I need to be here for a couple of weeks so I find oh. my foot again? First of all, of course not. Second of all, I'm staying at my friend Jennifer's in LA, so we'd technically be living with her, but okay. more of the area. <laughs> Oh, so I have to fly from New York to L.A. to stay with your friend Jennifer just for a couple of weeks. Also, just so everyone knows, we're doing we're both doing fine. We're just both paranoid people. I'm doing all right. Um, I mean, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm doing fine. So first of all, yeah. today is September 11th, the day that we're having this conversation. Yes. Um, tomorrow it will be September 12th, 13th. So this comes out the 13th. Yes. Um, Do you remember... Do you remember where you were on September 11th? Like, do you remember that day? I was just graduating preschool. And I think (laughs) that um, I no, I remember I was in uh, John Hersey High School, Arlington Heights, Illinois. And I was in this my second period class. It was math. And I remember someone I heard someone say two planes hit the train center. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound like that big of a deal. And then they turned on the TV and it was trade center and i'm like so it was um we just watched it all day and being from chicago i remember everyone in chicago thinking oh we're next and all of downtown was shut down the next like week like people weren't allowed to go downtown chicago really yeah because you know we have the at that time we had the world's tallest building Oh wow oh that's interesting that's yeah so that that that's different from because Obviously in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's coming after the lobster. Actually. Yeah, that's that's one thing about growing up in a super rural area. You're never that. Well, it's funny. It's funny because, you know, this a stereotype about people that like grow up in like, you know, like a wooded backwoods area where it's like a quote unquote pick or something is that they're like, you know, the Muslims are going to come get us. And it's like. No one's coming to get you. Like, no one even knows you're there. And that that's not what my town was like, but there's definitely a lot of people with guns in my town. But it's different. They go hunting. But I, but I re- no one was thinking that there would, that we were next with that. But I was in a, um, I was in a science class and then someone came in and said, uh, a plane hit the world, or a plane hit the World Trade Center and everyone was like, okay, 
No, and then someone said another plane did, and at some point everyone went into this one classroom. It was my my science teacher. His wife was the other science teacher, so I'm sure they had a really exciting sex life. But they <laughs> it was yeah. very specific. Yeah, yeah, calculating. Calculate. Yeah, I'm going to come in 3.4 seconds. Well, don't, because I have to make sure my pelvic is on the axis of 45 degrees. And uh, well, in that case... We have, like, no idea what science people even do. We just start... Oh, using, I have like, no idea. I would never understood no science clue. forever, no. They, we went into his wife's classroom, and the TV was, like, this tiny little TV on one of those giant, like, it was on some kind of giant rolly thing. Mm-hmm. And... No one thought it was a terrorist attack. People were like, what's going on? These plane people are crazy. Like, what's happening? And then the news, we only thought it was terrorists when the news said that. Oh, see, because we we watched the first, every TV in our, every classroom had a TV in it. Oh, none of them did in ours. None. Only, so everyone was huddled in one room. Oh, well, we also, what was your graduating class? Oh my! In in college, I mean, in, no, 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 in high okay. school. Um, I meant to high school. In high school, I think it was probably like ninety people. So mine was like eight hundred. Wow. So yeah, I think it, that's probably the the difference with like yeah. we, you know we had TVs in each room, and I remember we watched the first plane on fire, and it wasn't we watched the second plane hit live, and so that's when we were all like, oh, it's a terrorist attack. The sec the first one we were like, how the fuck. Do you hit a building and who? What an idiot! Da, 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 and like, right. And then the second plane hit, and you're like, oh. And then one of the kids in my class, his mom worked in the Pentagon, and okay. so we still went from class to class. I remember going from math and then going to history, but they just turned on the TV. We sat and watched it, and then we would. I went to choir, sat there and watched it. We went to lunch, sat there and watched it. I mean, you just watched all day. No one did tests. No one did anything. We just sat and watched it, and then. Everyone was like, well, time to go home. And then you just went home and we just sat and continued to watch the news. Did your parents, what, do you remember what your parents like said to you about it? Well, I mean, you know, at the time, everyone's still trying to figure it out. I remember my neighbor, I went to my friend Eric's house and his, a lot, at that time, I remember a lot of rumors were starting. So it was like, they had heard that the water sprinklers caused a flood in the Twin mm. Towers. And so people couldn't get out that way. And. People were saying, you know, it was just a number of things. But then I think it was pretty much within 24 hours. They were like, oh, it's Osama bin Laden. And then that, that was that was it. That started everything. But um, had, had, peop- had we even like heard of Osama bin Laden up to that point? Like, was he even like we, in the. Yes, he was. I we did. We didn't. You and I didn't know who he was. We were bit. We were too busy worrying right. about our sexuality. <laughs> But, um, you know, like, I think he was in the news and people knew who he was. The government certainly knew who he was. Like, you watch stuff now and go back and people people knew more what was going on. Right. Yeah, because I didn't, I, I don't remember my parents, like, talking about terrorism or, like, terrorism being, like, you know, I just, I don't really remember, like, hearing about that until then after, after that, then it became, like, Everywhere, and I remember going back and watching with my parents, and like just it. Then it then is that's when it became like a thing. Right. And then, then it was like everywhere, and then it was like, who's gonna? How are we gonna hunt down these the terrorists? Right. I remember it, it's so funny because like when you're a kid, you're just sort of arguing your parents' points. So I remember right. like when we were going to Iraq or Iraq. Uh, I remember so many kids arguing over it, and I thought none of us know what we're talking about and we're all just arguing whatever our parents are saying at home. Like that's basically what kids are doing. I remember that. I remember that too. Like the, it was because in, in my, in my, in my high school, it was pretty split like liberals and conservatives in my elementary school. Everyone was liberal. Cause I went to this like hippie elementary school. But I remember from that, I only had one friend whose parents were conservative. So this poor kid, because none of us knew what we were talking in high school a little bit more, but none of us knew what we were talking about, except for we were all just like fighting with this one kid, Brett, who mm-hmm. was like such a nice, such a nice kid. And we're all just like, I remember, even, but way before this, I remember in elementary elementary school, he was like, you know, he his, he was his parents were pro life, and he was like, I'm pro life. 
And then my friend Sam was like, I'm pro-choice. And then I went home and was like, mom, what are we? And she was like, well, I'm pro-choice, you know, and then you'll decide what you are someday. And then I went in and was like, I don't know what I am. But none of us had any idea what we were talking about. And I remember, but like, we were like yelling about it. And then our teacher was like, okay, you guys need to wait to have this conversation. We yeah, wait about six years. Yeah, just no clue being like, it kills babies. It's the woman's right to choose. And then just like. And then we're like, well, we don't even know how people get pregnant. Right, exactly. Exactly. Um, but, so there's a lot happened this week. And I feel like people are really yes. interested when we talk about pop culture. So I want to talk about a couple things today. One, I want to talk about Cardi B versus I wanted, Nicki Minaj. And I want to talk wanna, about Serena Williams. Yes, I want to talk about yeah. Serena Williams. And I want to talk about a wonderful article that we were in. Oh, um, I was going to really ask just, if you wanted to talk about. So you want to talk about that? Absolutely, I want to talk. Okay, about Okay, let's it. talk about. Let's save that for the end. It's, stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned to us um, uh, having a few opinions on it. What happened with Nikki and Cardi B? Because that I've been following the Serena thing. I didn't. I don't get. I mean, I liked Cardi B. Like that's who I like. So, but what happened? Well, you know, I would. I just want to say first of all that these are two grown women who have a lot of money and look great. Uh, yes. That's just Wendy Williams' opinion. I, first of all, here's what happened. So apparently... Also, thank God they both look great. Imagine what she would say if one of them didn't. I mean, didn't that would be great. the whole... Um, just remember that I met Cardi B. I'm going to send that to Tyler to put up on the Facebook page Ooh. because I, I interviewed her two years ago. Um, How was so, she to interview? It's, you know, what, exactly what you think she would be, like, sort of didn't care and didn't know who I was and was like, right. bye. Um, so I, uh, this is what I understand, is that apparently Cardi B, apparently Nicki Minaj has been rapping about, um, like, like subtle, subtle hate towards right. Cardi B, like going after her baby and going after her as a mother and also, I think that she has, well, it, it, this is in theory, right? That she she has been blocking her from working with specific people in the music industry. Oh so, God. like, like whether it's makeup artists or producers or saying, you know, say, you work with Cardi B, I'm not going to work with you. So, I guess, like, How Cardi insecure. Taken, I, exactly. But I guess I that's the theory, right? Or that's, like, what, because I don't know anything. I'm just sort of picking up what everyone else has right. been talking about. And um, so they saw each other at this event. And also, while they were fighting, Christina Aguilera was on stage singing Fighter, which I think is funny. Hilarious. Um, like that, like, was there, like, they forgot they were going to fight, and then they heard that, and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Christina, it's about Fighter. And they're like, oh, that that's right. Me. Get her. But so Cardi B threw a fucking shoe at Nikki. Then the security guards got to bolt no. them. But then somehow Cardi B left with, like, a huge bump on her head. And I was like, where the fuck did that bump come from? But Wait, she was so, wearing so much makeup, you couldn't see, like, any red bruises or anything. It just looked like a lump in her head. I didn't realize that the... I thought that the I thought the, the shoe-throwing thing was a joke. Because I, I saw that headline. I thought there, there's no way someone actually threw a shoe. Oh, she, she picked up shoe? her shoe and threw... Yes! God damn it. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't... But Nicki Minaj just looks like an idiot. Like, just just chill out and do your raps and stop like hating and like come up with like she's a good rapper and they're very different like cardi b's like a lot like she, sillier she, you know i don't know she just seems like i mean everyone's like oh yeah she keeps going after everybody and me as a mariah fan and look i've gone after mariah but right. i'm in mariah's defense the entire american idol situation and i don't know i mean nikki's really beautiful and she's got good music but it Wait, just what's seems the like Everywhere she goes, she creates some kind of controversy. So after a while, like, well, maybe maybe she's the common denominator in this situation. Right. Wait, what's Mariah Carey on American Idol? Oh, Mariah Carey was a judge on American Idol in like 2014. And she was supposed to be the only woman. And last minute, they brought on Nicki Minaj. Okay. And Mariah was like, well, I was supposed to be the only female judge. And then they brought in Nicki because I think they thought it would bring in more audience people. And then Nicki and Mariah started fighting immediately. And then there's this video of Mariah and Nicki, like, screaming at each other. And Amazing. it just was drama, 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 drama. And it's like everywhere you go, Nicki's got drama around her. But that being said, right. Mariah also does, too. And so does, look, so does Cardi B. I mean, Cardi B has been saying a lot of, she said a lot of shit, too. And it's, it's not totally Nicki's. 
fault. I mean, see, you know, I think it kind of is because the Cardi B's like, she's just like a jo- she's like a jokester. Like, I I think she's so funny. I've been following her on Instagram for a long time. Well, actually, not super long. I remember the girl in Boston, the twenty three year old who's now I'm guessing older because that's how time works. But when we were in Boston, <laughs> I remember she was like. You, you got to check out Cardi B and I had never heard of her. And then we went into a web of watching her and I was like, Oh, and then I was like, Oh, she's a rapper. Like, I just like thought she was a personality, but she just seems like, it doesn't seem like she's going, like taking it well, out of the music. I know and but then, the controversy is that she doesn't write her own music and Nikki does no. write her own music. And Cardi B definitely writes her own music. I don't think she, I don't think she does. That's what everyone's saying. I don't believe it. I really feel like we're two old people really trying to understand young people. Like, we're like, I heard that Cardi B doesn't (laughs) write her own music, and she threw a shoe. Now, when I was younger, I threw a shoe (laughs) once at the milkman because he brought me some sour milk. Now, I'm just looking at a cap and hepper. What would it take for you to throw? Like, I've never thrown. Oh, for me, it's like if I order a cheeseburger. And, like, a pickle comes on, and I asked her no pickles. She was coming off. One time and someone I, threw a strap on at me. It was a, one of my... Yeah, one, it was one of was my... Was it your mother on. when she found it in the bathroom again? No. It was an ex-girlfriend, and I remember. It was right after college, and we were dating, and I remember being like, oh, like I don't... I didn't want to keep being in a relationship. And, um, and I remember, like, right after school, I got kind of... I just, like, got kind of, like, swept into this day job because I was trying to invent something at night so I didn't really think a lot about the day job I took and then I got like locked into it and was like oh my god like this could be the rest of my life so I was like kind of freaking out because I was recruiting construction executives which I was yeah so but then I remember I was gonna break up with my girlfriend and I remember I I was gonna do it the first time and we I woke up in the middle of the night was like I have to talk to you and she's like, what? And I was like, I have to talk to you. And then she's like, I love you too. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. Then I was like, all right. I love you. But I felt so weird about it. I was like, ah, oh, man, whoops. And I did. And then I remember telling my friend, she was like, you love her? And I was like, I have a love for her. Well, but, that's all. A, a love. Right. I, have, I have a love for a Belgian waffle. Exactly. Oh, I love Belgian. See, I love Belgian waffles. But I do also, too. Love. I that's why I was a fat kid. I ate so many Belgian waffles. But where do they have Belgian waffles in my Maine? Fucking, my m- goddamn mom cooked them every morning so I would stay at her house. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad let me have poster strudel so I'd stay at his house, and that's wh- how you make someone fat. <laughs> <laughs> do you say do you say this on stage? That no. the reason you're fat is because your parents were trying to fight over who's gonna stay at whose house? Yeah, no. Will you write that down right now? That is yeah. a funny fucking bit. I guess I, you know, sometimes when it's like too real, too real. Oh, yeah. It is, girl. It is. That is the. It, it's it's the real. No, that, that's why I was. But I remember. Um, you could say most people are fat, but you would say it's because I was depressed and because I didn't know how to express myself. No, my parents bribed me with strudels and Belgian waffles to stay right. in each other's house because they hated each other so much. So my parents' hate for each other caused me to have an obesity problem. Right. They're, or they're like, how'd you lose the weight? I'm like, well, I got in a fight with my parents. Um, <laughs> but then we, what, the time I actually did break... Oh, I remember I went over. I was like, I'm going to break up with her. And she had made this delicious vegan cake. And I was like, too scared to break up. Good so Lord, everyone up. is just like using food to get you. I know, and it works. But then, and then I remember eating the cake, and then I was like, okay, and then we were going to go visit her parents that weekend. I was like, no, I need to talk to you. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to break up. And she was like, what? And she was like, why did you come in here and eat the cake? Why didn't you break up with me first? And I was like, I didn't know what to do. And then she went Well, you don't room. sit and eat a cake and say, delicious. I'm breaking up with you. Clean up the dishes. Right. Well, yeah, I was just panicked. And and so then she went into her room and she was like throwing like my stuff. She's like, "You're worse than a guy." Like blah blah blah. And then she took the um, <laughs> the strap on that we bought and like chucked it at my head. And I was like, "Okay, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving." And you were like, "Ooh, thank God!" But that cake was delicious. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I think the cake was pretty good actually. But she was like pissed about that. Which you know what? Fair enough. I so, I can't think of a time that I threw anything at anybody. I've never thrown anything. But uh, 
Because it's like you have to take it off and be like, you know what? Like, also the also how much money missed. do you have that you're taking off a five thousand dollars shoe and right? throwing it at someone's head? That's and the kind I, of life yeah. I want. I want the life <laughs> where I'm just chucking Louis Vuittons at anybody. Yeah, a shoe goes by my That's, head. They're like, yeah. what's that? I'm like, Mateo made it. He got cast in a movie. He's doing yeah. very well. Yeah, when I catch a cab, I don't put out my thumb. I pick up my shoe, <laughs> throw it at a cab, and then leave it on the ground. I feel like, I wonder if she got the shoe back. I'm going to guess no. I was but probably you know with Smithsonian next to Aretha Franklin's hat. Right. But she's so, but she's also hormonal because she just had a kid. Yeah, but don't be like, that's a horrible. That's what, like, that's the antithesis of being a woman is blame your, blame your emotions on your hormones. True. I'm seeing, I believe that Cardi B writes her own raps, and I'm seeing Cardi B 100%. If she doesn't write her own raps, I see why Nicki Minaj is frustrated, but it's like, if I, you know, if I was a rapper, like if I was like a super famous comedian, I would want people to help me with jokes, not write jokes for me, but I'd want like a team of people so we could like brainstorm during the day. The only I'm team, is- I'm team Solange because Solange did it right. She got in that elevator, got real close to Jay Z, let him have it, and then never spoke about it again. True. And everyone is on her side. I mean, to this day, I've yet to meet any person who's like, oh, Solange was wrong. You're like, nope. No, no. She was right. Right. Also, but she didn't make it like a huge spectacle, too. Even though she beat the thing. She, well, she just didn't talk about it. Right. Also, what's Jay-Z going to do? Hit her back? Like, that's like... No, he did the right thing. You know, he stood away. Well, Beyonce did it. She didn't, Beyonce was acting like it wasn't even happening, even though it was right, right in front of her. But, you know, what's she going to do? I mean, good Lord. Okay, so Serena Williams. Yeah, so... I was following that because so many comedians were like really worked up about it. And I noticed a lot of straight white guys in particular were pissed at Serena. So then that made me be like, okay, what's the real story here? Because if ever like oh, straight white guys are like strongly taking a stand on one side, it makes me a little bit curious about like what's the underlying thing. So it seems like, but it does seem like her coach was coaching her from the side, the sidelines. Well, I don't know anything about tennis. I mean, that's the thing. As I watched her coach it, was in the sidelines giving her, like, coaching, and so she got a penalty for it. But then Was she getting coaching? I mean, was that, like, confirmed? I think so. I don't know why the guy – why would the ref just, like – I mean, to be – it's so – to become a referee, you have to, like – I don't know what the fuck you have to do, actually. It but looks like you just have to sit there and yell at women. Sounds – I mean – Sounds like but, you know, I, I feel like, first of all, that cartoonist in Australia did a drawing of Serena. And it yeah, was, what the fuck? I know. And then I watched his interview, and he was so out of touch with reality that his response was verbatim. He said, I'm not sure how to make someone look African-American by not drawing them to make them look like an African-American. And I was like, I don't think you get it. Like, you know, wow. you, you sound more racist from that. And look, as an artist and illustrator and someone who does caricatures and cartoons, there is definitely a way to draw people and not have it go on some horrible racist stereotype. I mean, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like or he, don't he, draw them. And he focused on all the wrong things. Like he really just is an idiot. He was a complete right. idiot. He's a racist. Yeah, if I was if I was drawing someone and like it just kept coming out where I was like, well, this doesn't look, this looks racist. I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna not put this out there. But also, they shouldn't have published it either. Yeah, but I don't think that Australia even. I don't even think that's on their radar. I mean, I don't even know. I'm, I don't live there. I have no idea what they. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I just. I'm glad he's getting flack for it. But when I when I yeah. watched it, knowing nothing of tennis, so I'm hedging this conversation with I know nothing of tennis. Right. It just sort of felt nice to watch her yell back. <laughs> it yeah, it was felt, therapeutic. Oh, it was very cathartic. It was like, you know what, Serena, whether you're in the right or wrong, let him have it. I mean, I just was like, let him have it. You know what, this woman has <laughs> She has done so fucking much, and she's got to be exhausted. I mean, her whole life is just plain fucking tennis. She's probably like, you know and what? And also I'm that girl, sick of you. And the girl against her was twenty years old. I mean, that would personally just piss me off. Oh, but she was amazing. That girl she was, was unbelievable. She was so cool. And then at the end, it was so cool that she's like, I just really wanted to play Serena Williams. 
Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, she was like, right. I kind of already won. <laughs> I yeah. think Serena Williams. 20 years old. They're, um, Billie Jean King, the lesbian. Uh, Who I met, by the way. I interviewed her on the red carpet, and she was what? fantastic and slightly hitting on me. No way. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Like, oh, my God, your arms, and you look at how adorable you look, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, girl, I will... I will take all of this. I'm I I am obsessed. And then I had to interview fucking Snooky after her. I love Snooky. I can't stand her. I love her. The, oh, Billie Jean so King rude. said that. So this is what I'm gonna side with because she said that Serena Williams was wrong by sexism and an archaic rule at the U.S. Open. So okay, fine. I'll sometimes when I don't know what's going on, I'll just find someone who I like respect, and I'm like, all right, I I defer. I mean, I'll just go with whatever Billie Jean King says because I love her. And also, I, but again, I saw Giannis Papas, right? He, he knows everything yeah. about tennis. And he was like, he's like, you guys don't understand. He's like, this has nothing to do with sexuality or racism or, or race or gender. Or He's like, you know, she was cheating and this and that. I'm like, I, look, as someone who doesn't give a shit about tennis, the only tennis I care about is Mario tennis. I mean, I just thought it was fabulous. I was like, let her have it or let him have it. If she was cheating, because it's also like, why would you, I mean, if she was cheating, then uh, at a certain point, it's like, I can't imagine like all that, because there's like so much pressure once you're that successful. It's like each thing, then it's like, there's like, so, you know, there's a lot of weightage to go down. So you probably just get like in it, you know, so warped in trying to like maintain your incredible superhumanness that, but also it's like. The, the, I, you know, as someone who like cheated a lot in school, that would be like the. Oh, I cheated thing. all the time. But like, you, that'd be like cheating on something even way bigger than the SAT with like thousands of people watching you. Like, how would you even. Re- if you can pull off cheating at the US Open, fucking, you deserve it. If, but, I, but she didn't pull it off. But if, I don't think she was even cheating. I don't think right. she was cheating. Guess how much money um, Billie Jean King is worth? How much? 16 million. I mean, good for her. What would you she, see? 16 million dollars? I don't even yeah, know what. Sometimes those um, celebrity net worth things are wrong, but. Oh, they're yeah. wrong all the time. Um, I don't mean this in a mean way, but she looks, she's a little bit of a ferret face. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you just say? Nothing. Did you just say, I don't mean this in the wrong way, she looks like a ferret? Just a tiny bit. Um, <laughs> Are not you... in a bad way. Who? Uh, what? If someone said, you, Emma, I don't mean this in a bad way, that you really, really look a little gerbilish, what would your response to that be? I think I was making a weird face. No, I'd you would like, pick oh, up I your making... shoe and throw it at them. Oh, it depends who said it, that's true. Anybody. Who's, what is, is she, what kind of women does she date? Does she date, like, Girly, oh, 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 looks like we've got a two-man one situation. <laughs> My God, Emma. They're both, they both, uh, they're both sporty. Well, good for them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I met her. Does she have a wife? Yeah, her wife is a little bit more feminine, but um, very sporty. I'm looking at Billie Jean King's you, wife. And you know what? Good for them. Aw, they look love cute. Love. Yep. Love is love. They look so cute. Yeah, Billy can rock it with those fucking jackets. Her wife's pretty. Her wife looks Italian. I bet you she's Italian. Her wife looks Italian, yeah, I'll give you that. Barnett, good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a guess. I'm gonna say yeah, it's Italian. But good I mean, good for them. They're very cute. They look like oh yeah, uh looks like uh Billy's the man one there. It's mm. not, it's, it takes a little bit of investigating sometimes with these lesbians, but. By the way, on this topic, which has nothing to do with this topic, Mariah Carey does have a new single coming out Friday, and I'm so excited for it. What's it called? Mm, it is called, Mariah Carey's new single coming out this Friday is entitled, How About You, GTFO, so get the fuck out. The confirmation oh, of release will arrive soon, and the second song should be coming shortly after. Jesus. Do you think I'm setting let? So here's the thing. When I do all my man one stuff, it's a way, you know, I've, de- you know, I try to be very, like, conscious of, like, race, class, gender, and deconstructing things. And it's a way, you know, it's in, it's totally, like, 
in jest and like a way of like just uh, you know. Are you talking about offending people? Yeah, well, do you think I'm setting the um, gay community? I don't think I am, but do you think I'm setting the gay community back 700 years? Oh, well, uh, 700 years. I mean, come on. First of all, I think that you are someone who's open about your gender wiggleness. And exactly. that I think when you talk about male and female, that you're talking about it in a way that you fit in both categories and that you you've had conscious decisions and, and conscious effort to to talk about how you relate to the stereotypical gender male stereotypes, right. sometimes more than women. So I think yes. that you're somebody who's not just, you know, saying, hi, I identify as cis female lesbian. I think that you're saying I'm gender wiggly. I'm somewhere in between. And a lot of, it, of your observation is coming from, from that standpoint where, you know, you kind of are making these like obvious, um, uh, also, gay you're... people, gay people need to, because gay people are always like, oh, we hate it when someone asks who's the man and who's the woman. But you know what? Gay people are always trying to figure out who's the top and who's the bottom in relationships, too. So I mean, I think that there, are, like, if people ask me who's the man or woman with Kike, I would say. See, that's ridiculous. But but that's what I'm saying. Look, I I relate to a lot of feminine qualities. I, I mean, mean, you I are am... probably more, you're more the woman, but it's a ridiculous question. But 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 I but maybe I am, and I don't think it's a bad thing, and I don't think I don't think it's explaining it to straight people is the same way explaining it to a queer person. I think if you say to a straight person, this is oh, a perfect I'm more... lead in to us right. talking about the article. But... Right. Well, let's just let's just quickly let's just quickly give a a, a generalization of what we're talking about. So yes. we we both for Netflix were asked by their PR team to do promotion with certain outlets and publications and some of them small, some of them big. Which and is we, great. And we love, I love doing interviews and I'm so, used to doing interviews. But, yes. But we've learned our lesson because I think we've taken a step up in our career and we, we, we are now people are writing down what we're saying, which is new to both of us. So this woman um, interviewed us and Separately. identified separately but identified as a lesbian or a queer person i believe so she interviewed us under the guise of being excited when she was talking to us on the phone about talking to two queer people doing comedy and we gave our honest honest answers to her about being a queer person in comedy feeling that we were in a safe space when the article came out but we were and also let me add compared to well, oh, let me, Iris, so, okay. real quick, let me just, so we can give it overall. When we were, when the article came out, the article came out, a, a lot of the article basically compared us to Hannah Gatsby, who's great, and her special, Nanette, saying- Compared that, us unfavorably. Right, saying that, you know, because she says you shouldn't be self-deprecating in her special, she pointed out all of our quote-unquote mistakes for where we were self-deprecating and also said that we had the same jokes and also said that we were anti-women. So not only did this woman, without us asking, could use our quotes, uh, without or use our material, but she also... Well, she did ask if she could use our quotes. I mean, that was... Quote, part quotes, yes, not material. But she also got yeah. everything wrong. So I want to yeah. go in and explain why she got everything wrong. But first, yeah, I want to hear what you, what you have to say. I just wanted to give an overall so people understood where we were coming from. Yeah, and she, I mean, she can use the, she can use the quotes and she can use the material. I mean, other, the, the one thing, one thing too is, you know, there's one thing doing a critique of a um, special and then there's one thing doing an interview. Hers was a critique, but what bothered me so much is like the way that she asked the questions were like very friendly. And I was surprised of all the people that I talked to, the person that was then the most hater. And it wasn't a hater, like, I don't think this person is funny. It was like in relation to Hannah Gadsby, this person is not doing comedy the right way as now defined by Hannah Gadsby. The, when you're gonna critique a comedian, that's fine. But we can't be using other comedians as the standard. If we wanna be, totally. she also said, does Netflix have a queer problem using my fucking face? You know, right. I am someone who doesn't have a queer problem. And all I can do, first of all, I'm giving it 15 minutes. I'm not giving a full hour. I'm giving 15 minutes. So in 15 minutes, I'm going to give you jokes. And in my jokes, yeah. I'm going to talk about things that affect my life. It's my perspective. And she says I'm anti-woman. Why? Because I went after Lindsay Lohan? 
What did I say that was anti-woman? She lost a finger in a boating accident in Greece. She defended Harvey Weinstein. She defended. She she tweeted the other totally. week. John Mc, I'm uh, R.I.P. John McCain. Feel better. So I'm not going after Michelle Obama. I'm going after someone who uh, there's nothing more incriminating I could say about her than she says for herself. So that's also, number one. You're going after a specific person, not women in general. You're not up there going, what's with all these stupid women? Here's an example of one of their kind. You're literally talking about... I, I do think it's okay when people compare comedy specials, but I think they have to be... It has to be with they an understanding of comedy. Yeah, because basically it's saying there can only be one narrative for queer performers, and if the narrative is not what she thinks it should be, which is this one special, who I did watch the whole thing and I actually really liked it, but you can't compare it to our 15-minute Stand up sets. That's that's it's what I think what hurt me the most in it was that it was like the one interview I did with a lesbian, which I would think would be the most understanding of the different narratives in queer experience was the least like if that had been a straight person being like these two aren't like Hannah Gadsby. So clearly Netflix has like a problem with queer comedians. I'd be like, you're not even making any that doesn't even that that doesn't that, that's that's so problematic. Like, like we can't have. Or to say that we're, we have similar jokes, like our cadences are so different and we're each talking about our experiences. So like two people can't talk about our experiences because, I mean, that would be like saying all straight people can't talk about dating because one other straight person did it. It just, it's just completely internalized homophobia. It is. And I also think too, it's like, if we're going to be knocking down queer people for expressing themselves rather than sure. lifting them up, I think we're going to find ourselves in a big problem. It's like, this is the first time in a long time where we're watching queer people do stand-up comedy the way we've understood it by straight men for so long that yeah, it, and we need to voices. allow, yeah, we need to allow amazing. these different voices to grow and to shine and to evolve. And, and you know, I just thought, have above, above all, look, if she hated my special too, I don't care. If she thinks I'm a misogynist, fine. Like, whatever you think about me, I don't give a shit. What I'm most upset is, is that she called us, basically lied to us, pretending she was on our side, and then immediately turned around and then said we were using low-hanging fruit material and that we were, you know, we were doing a disservice, uh, essentially, to the LGBT community. I would be okay with if she was describing my comedy as low-hanging fruit. I mean, that's, that's, it's definitely a pot shot and, like, she was, like, misleading with the interview. I would be okay with the low-hanging fruit. I would be okay with any critique of my comedy if it wasn't so clearly, like, you know, I would be, like, I was really happy with the special and I got just so much overwhelming support, too. But, Same. So if it was, like, I would be okay with the critique of the comedy if it wasn't in relation to saying there's only room for one queer narrative, that's, I, that's just so. Yeah. I think that's where the most dangerous part is. I, I think above everything, if we're only going to look at Hannah Gatsby to be the only way to do and express our, our, it's our so feelings not and fair. comedy and artistic point of view, you know, then you're just silencing everybody else for their experiences. And, and it's like, there was a new special. I haven't got to see it yet, but it's supposed it's like going to be a really progressive one where it's a straight guy, um, straight white male comic. And he does a special in front of uh, the special is not in front of an audience. So that's like a really new mold for doing a comedy special. And I'm excited to see it. But it would not be fair then for every other straight male when they come out with a special to then say, well, they're doing it in front of an audience, so now this is not what comedy is anymore. You know, there was this new special where there's no audience, so now comedy needs to have no audience, because I liked that one special. It's like, no. Well, I, I think, too, like, just to save our asses, because if she listens to us and fights us, whatever, but it's like... She definitely I'm, doesn't listen to the podcast. Otherwise... Yeah. Otherwise, she would know about how, how, how you sort of... Uh, Describe yourself categorically, sexually, and gender-wise. Also, fat shaming a, a teapot? Like, come on, girl. Like, I've I never know, it's so ridiculous. It's a goddamn fucking tea. It's a cartoon. It's a yeah. pot. What, what I mean, skinny she, pots do you see? She's not a Turkish she, coffee pot. And the joke is that my brother would be attracted to a teapot. That's why it's weird. She says, she says yeah. Emma would be attracted to a teapot, which is funny because the tea, or Emma would be attracted to a teapot how crazy because it's chubby or something like that. And it's like, no, it's, it's, it's a cartoon. 
that's I guess not, overall it wasn't too bad, but it was just it was just sad to see us use as the example and, for her to make her whatever point she wanted to make about queer yeah. comedy. Just say I, I didn't like these two specials as much as uh, or don't interview us. Interview someone don't that interview, you like. Yeah. Just do a, yeah. do a commentary on how you felt Nanette was great, and then don't drag us into it because we're not it's here just, trying to hate on Nanette to, either. It stung too from that it was from a queer person. Like it, th- that's the one thing too, because it was, and then it was also just like poking around on it. I was like, okay, I, I, like I see what's I see. Do you think that there's a certain type of narrative for, for queerness, and if it doesn't fit that, you want to not encourage viewership and silence it. Right. And to it's me, like, that's problematic. Are, are we going to say that Lady Bunny is not as much of a voice in our community and fight for gay rights as Hannah Gatsby, as is Fran Lebowitz, as exactly. is, you know, Ronan Farrow, as is, you know, Anderson Cooper, as is, uh, you know, I mean, the list goes on. So it's totally. like, you know, we are obviously, just because we're under the the LGBTQ you know, sort of, I don't even know, category. It doesn't mean that we all have to share this. We don't have to express ourselves the same way. So I, I did love like the it was saying a- low hanging fruit though. I, I want that to be the name of an album or a special or something. Yeah, it's, it, it is That is funny. really funny. Yeah, low hanging fruit. She wasn't it's- meaning it in a funny way, but it. Oh, it's hysterical. It is. It is funny. I bet you if we talked to her too, I bet you she would. I, I don't know. We'd probably find I'm okay. I'm talking after I after I read it too, like I didn't even mention it to you and our in, and pilot intern for I think it was like two days after I read it because I read it and I was like you know that's discouraging because it felt manipulative and it felt I couldn't put my finger on why it seems that I why it seems so like odd because we we trusted person. someone and learned our lesson I think right. she had said to us I'm writing an article about Hannah Gatsby Nanette right. and queer comics. And I'm, I will be directly comparing your comedy to hers. I would say, oh, then do yourself a favor and don't interview me. That's what I would say. Sure. But she didn't do that. She said, I'm here just to talk about queer comedy. And so I said, oh, great. I can share my experience, which oh, is She didn't a even different... open it with that to me at all. She was just like, I want to talk about your Netflix special. Like, woo. But yeah, basically, yeah. You know what? It's interesting because I just did an interview on SiriusXM where we were, were talking all about everything you know whatever in in my career and being an artist all stuff and one segment out of it we talked about louis ck and he asked me what i thought of louis ck so i gave him two different we separately talked about the seller and louis and i said about louis that is everywhere by the way that is like that's getting into i mean in la people were talking about it i I mean it's everywhere well i i was saying like oh i for Louis, I said, because he kept asking me about redemption. He's like, when do we get redemption? And my response was, I don't think we should be talking about redemption until we've all gotten on the same page about how to treat women. Right. We obviously, that, yeah. right. So then they separately asked me about the seller. And I said um, that, you know, it, it's been a hard week. And I understand Gnomes, uh, who's the owner, I understand his pain. And he's trying to create a place that's good for comics and, and um uh, workers and audiences alike, and they mm-hmm. out of all that they only use that clip. So they used me to talk about Louis and the seller, and oh, even no. refer to what I said about women, and posted that on the internet. And it's like, you, like, oh, I get it. So like from now on, I'm just not going to talk about anything unless it's on my own podcast. But see, that is more indicative of what lots of interviews are like. That, that's 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 more something where it's like, oh, frustrating. They like kind of took a clip out of context. That to me is. Is is frustrating, but so much less problematic than someone. I don't even think I would have been bothered if it wasn't coming from within the queer community. If it wasn't in that queer community, I would have been like, "Oh, it's just another point of view or that's misguided." Because it's in the queer community, that's where I was like, "Okay, you should know better." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I think no matter what, if someone said I was fat shaming a teapot, I'd be like, "Okay." really shouldn't be critiquing comedy like, <laughs> yeah, if you, if like, you're, if, yeah if you're offended by me referring to a cartoon is chubby because as a teapot the only shape you can be in is perfectly tea, round bitch. yeah you know what i mean I, it's I like, like my teapots like i like, my, like full of tea lady i'm not saying it's a bad you know what i mean like give me right. a goddamn cauldron I, right you know, i've been with and also like yeah i've been with women of all sizes i and and i would um 
any kind of fat shaming is so sensitive to me because I was talking with the art therapist about the other day about the concept of when you feel like a uh, not an intruder, but a you and I have talked about it before, not uh, not an intruder, an imposter when you're like if you're doing well and then it's like all of a sudden you can feel like, oh, like this this isn't the real me. Like, do I deserve this? And where I feel that sometimes is I'll feel it because I can always revert back to feeling what it felt like when I felt like trapped in my when I was in like the cycle of like really like overeating and I was like really he- like and I was like heavy and just feeling like I remember in high school then when I lost the weight and it, it, it I didn't people everyone was like looking at me different and talking to me differently like it was so weird but I just can always remember like just like looking at my body and being like I don't I felt like so like claustrophobic and just encased and being being overweight is like so it's similar to when I had like problem when you have problems with skin it just feels like you're trapped isn't the right word but like well do you know what I used to have I used to have rosacea I used to have my my cheeks in high school and got really bad in college (laughs) my cheeks were like not even just red I mean they were like they would get heavy and hot and red and I'd have to wear like this green stuff to make it go away. And yep. it was like, not painful. That's the wrong word, but like I was so self-conscious about it and it was so mm-hmm. obvious because that's all people would talk about. So really? I went to, yeah. So I went and also can lead into like really bad problems if you don't take care of it. So right. I went to a, a laser guy referred to by my dermatologist at the time and they they lasered my whole face to close up all of the blood cells so that my face stopped getting so red and it and it worked Obviously it, worked, it worked yeah wow. and it's like you know the thing is like I don't think about it anymore but at the time that's all I thought about I yep. only thought about like oh my god my face and I look red and what's going on and blah 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 and people are judging me and this and that um you know so and if I ever did do a like a fat shame or a anything or like any kind of racist sexist classes anything i would be i want to be called out and held accountable for that and like every and examine where it came from all that stuff and so that's why that was just like what i know but you know what at the same time it's like we're going to be getting this a lot so we're also just going to have to get used to it yes Yes. I just said and, that like I, I was fucking more, Cardi B, but I'm not. <laughs> I And I want more from, I mean, I'm trying to think, I had such, you know, I want more from queer journalists to go beyond just, you know, if you're going to look at comedy specials, understand, you know, the la- comedy landscape or the context or really anything. Um, yeah, understand what informed. you're talking about. I mean, yeah. that's pretty much it. It's like it, it, you can't look at one special and say, oh, I understand comedy. You have to understand right. there's many different points of views. And, you know, I are we getting too whole, serious on these special. podcasts? No, I watched um, the rest of the Nanette special. Oh, you finally watched it? Yeah, I really liked it. Oh, man. T- okay. I was going to say it took you forever. You're like, yeah, I saw half of it. Like, Emma, you have I to know. see the other half. I saw the first 20 minutes. And so I was like, I was like, oh, it's funny. And everyone was like, what? I was like, yes, I thought it was funny. And they were like, how much did you watch? And I was like, the first 20 minutes. And then they're like, it takes a turn. So then I watched the rest of it. And I was like, no, this is an incredible piece of work. Um, I really liked it. I, I want to tell you about someone who was really nice to me. Okay. Being in LA, I went to a comedy club last night. You know, in New York, like you see, like your friends, and like we all work together so much. So in LA, I feel like the new kid, and I right. hadn't been hanging out at the clubs. Right. So I'm staying at my friends. It's four minutes from the Improv. The Colbert Booker got me a five minute set because we're trying to work on a tape. She's like, "Go over to the Improv." So I was like, "Okay." So I took a little scooter over there. And I was like, oh, like no one knows me here. Like, so I go in and I'm like, I got there really early, like an hour before showtime. So I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm going to be friendly. Like, you know, like just, like I'm kind of like smiling at people, like really feeling like the new kid. 
And I was nervous. I was at the bar. Like, my hands were almost kind of, like, shaking. It was weird. Like, I don't know why I was so... It wasn't about the set. It was just about feeling weird. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that Whitney Cummings was on the bill. And I know her from crashing. And then I was... And we we actually really hit it off at that. And then um, when I was... You know, LA Comics... It's interesting. I had I've had two different LA comics come up to me and I'll say I'm from New York and they go, "Yeah, I never wanted to live in New York. I never wanted to be a comic where you just perform eight sets a night in front of two people. I'm trying to like really be a multifaceted performer." And I would be like, "Okay. Hi, you know, like they're just saying that like right away. Like I was like, "Yeah, I'm not judging you for living in LA. Like also right. like, most comedy clubs in New York are packed. Like it's not actually like that, but sure, like whatever." But I saw Whitney Cummings and she was like, I want to say that I think she's one of the nicest people in show business. Who oh, would she's you say so is, nice. Have you, who would you say is like the nicest, like higher up, like famousy famous people that you've had good interactions with? Well, Sarah Silverman was really nice. Was she? That's good to hear. Um, the high, Amy Schumer was really nice. Yes. Um, of like That's high cool about up. Sarah Silverman. Yes, she was so great. We were back. We did a show together. We chatted. She she was just very down to earth. I mean, that was yes, I mean, she acted so down to earth. I'm trying to get like the the higher higher ups of people that we know it's, that are like And she was like a real person. Like she was like she was just her, it just felt like really like nice and then I instantly felt more comfortable and I was like, yeah, that's what I would want to do for someone it just makes such a difference too like when you know it's just because i think too when people like aren't friendly or are mean or whatever it's like everyone's just like bopping around with it's an insecurity thing so it just makes such a difference when someone is nice to you yeah it's nice and she was yeah, like and when you're not at nice. home it's nice to like i always try to be nice to comics that i don't know i'm like oh, yes. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. but sometimes i'm in my own head um, I right. have to go soon, so I want to just, like, get to a couple of questions. Okay, um, let's do one question, yeah. So, okay, here's one for you. How can a feminine presenting bisexual woman hit on another woman? It's all in the eye contact. So, <laughs> literally, you just give them one tiny hint, and they should pick up on it. Like, if you, oh, say, if you, if the person's more masculine presenting, say that they're, if you... If you, I like it if someone says, like, you look cute or handsome. I like that. I'm going to be cautious with that because maybe some more masculine presenting people don't. But if you want to hit a note, it's really got to be, it's, if the person's obviously visually gay, then they're going to know. If they know that you know that they're gay, so if it's a feminine woman, but they know it's a feminine lesbian that you're hitting on, and that feminine lesbian. I feel lesbian like we're doing a math problem. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Right. They know that you know that they know. If that they don't know gay. that they know that you knew that they knew that they knew that they knew that, that they didn't know that they this knew. And that and that's what so oh god I'm confused. So if they know that you know they're gay, mm-hmm. you don't you can just kind of, it's like you divide it contact, by four. Divide it by four, eat uh-huh. a Kit Kat backwards, clap Got your hands. It. Work. If, check them out. Like if you check someone out and I, then they'll pick up on it and then if they can't pick yeah, up on that you're flirting don't right, do this somebody out too is easy you, mean, you can really easy. give them the look you know what i mean don't do this don't go up and be like don't treat them like you would treat a straight girl don't go up and be like oh my god you're so pretty they're just gonna think you think oh my god i love that shirt now they're gonna just think you're straight go up and be like don't be, say i love your shirt i mean unless you really are pretty the way you say it i I feel like I haven't hit on somebody in so long that I don't even know how to do it anymore. And even when I did, I didn't know how to do it. Like, I'd answer questions they didn't ask. They'd be like, hi. I'm like, good. And right. I mean, me I too. Just, I got to, I, one time, it's, for me to hit on somebody at a bar, by the way, it just takes so much effort. Like, I couldn't even, when I used to be single, I remember, like, two years or a year and a half ago, I was at this bar, and there was this beautiful Brazilian guy, and he was just standing and talking to nobody. And we, he kept giving me looks, so he was giving me, like, the gay looks. So I knew it was okay to, like, go over there. Even when I was over there, I was just like, hey. And he's like, hello. And I was like, hi. Um, it's cold out. Like, I don't know what to do. 
But if he was giving you the looks, then it's on him to carry the conversation too. I w- yeah, but that's the thing is everyone's just giving each other looks, and then everyone's too much of like a, a, a wimp to go up and talk to other people. So it's just a bunch of gays side eyeing each other, and no one right. gets laid until you get on an app at home and you're like, oh, they were into me. Right. I yeah, talking to people, or I would ask questions, and then they would just I just would not be cool. Like you wouldn't be cool. What do you mean? Like. Like the other day, I was filming something. So, like, me and our therapist are monogamous relationship. I'm not interested in anybody else at all. But I was filming something where it was kind of like it'd be funny if I like tried to like flirt a little bit with the waitress. Mm-hmm. So, and it was like totally for the show, not real. Yeah. So, because I so I was like, I was like, um, how long have you worked here? And she's like, a year. And I was like, that's it. That's all she gave you. Yeah, she was like a year, and then I was like, "Cool." Um, did you always want to be a dancer? It was like a burlesque bar, and she was like, "No, I wanted to be a nurse. I never thought I'd be doing this." And I was like, "Oh," and then she was like, "Yep." And then oh, I see, to it. me, that's like they don't want to talk. Run. <laughs> yeah, then oh! she just wasn't into me. And then I said, "I was like, it was a burlesque bar, and we were ordering cake." And I was like, "Is it weird for us to be eating cake while you guys are dancing?" And she was like, "No." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> I would, you know what I would say? If, if first of all, in in real life, I'd run away. But if there was a camera crew around me, I would say, "Is this typically how you treat people like trash, or <laughs> what am I supposed to do here?" She was smiling. She just wasn't interested. And then I was like, "The art therapist would have thought it was endearing." So I was well, yeah, because the art therapist is like a really good person. Yeah. How yeah. Are you I got, you got, be super cool for the art therapist. Thank God. I feel like I still have to be cool for Kike. You know what Kike I mean? Kike is the coolest. I know. You know, I'm going to But in a good so way. You don't have to be cool for him. He loves being you. Being so far away from him makes me go crazy. And he's so confident and cool. He can be like, he's so cool. you know, hello, Amore, I miss you. But then he's fine not talking for five hours. And I panic. And I like five got mad at him this week plenty. because it was... Is it- is not too, five hours is a good amount. That's totally normal. To well, he's. I was in Las Vegas, so our time difference is even more. But I said I want to talk to you before you go to bed. That's important to me. And then he would get home at three o'clock in the morning, be exhausted, and pass out, and because he works really late. And then right. you know the next morning, be like, "Sorry, Mori, I was at work," and I was like, "I don't like when you don't <laughs> talk to me." And it happened three days in a row, and then I was like. Well, that's it. It's over. We're broken up. Mateo, like, Jesus Christ. It's never going to happen. I know. That's the problem. See, I, the Italian woman comes out of me. I am so <laughs> testadura. But oh my God. I was mad. I was like, you can't pick up the fucking phone and call me, you son of a bitch. And he's like, amore. And like, he picks up. He's like, I miss you too. And I'm like, you're going to call me. That's so funny that he would. It's cute, too. Um, as long as I guess you're not like 100% serious about it. <laughs> I mean, I really like to talk to him. It's cute. And I'm dating such a fucking man. Like women, I get it. Like last night we were talking and I could hear him clicking. And I'm like, Amore, are you on the computer? What are you doing? He goes, I'm looking at shoes, Amore. I want to buy sneakers. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, totally. He is. He really is. I asked him once. I was like, Kiki, do women hit on you a lot? He went, sometimes. And I was like, they must hit on you a lot. And he was like, sometimes. Uh-huh. And, and then I was like, what do they say when you when they find out you're gay? And he was like, oh, sometimes they get mad, uh, frustrated, uh, you know. And I was like, yeah, I could, <laughs> I could see that. I could see, I could, I could totally, I could totally see. It, they, they're a strip. Women, I mean, I feel like women get attracted to you, too. No, uh-uh, not at all, not even close. I walk, I might as well walk around with, like, a neon blinking do. sign, like, brighter than Vegas that says, gay! I agree, no but I think they do. No one. Didn't Carly say you would be her perfect, like, the perfect man? Yeah, she enjoyed a mushy dick. I mean, I don't know what kind of perfect man she's into. Right. I'm not going to be able to give her a... I'm not, you think I'm going to be able to satisfy... Look at Carly. You think I'm going to be able to satisfy Carly? How can well, the bottom satisfy her? Well, I guess it's... I guess it's... I feel like women would think that you're 
But definitely with Kike, they wouldn't be able to tell he's gay. No, he's very like, uh, well, some, I'm, I don't know. He just has such a thick Venezuelan accent. That's all I make fun of. Right. But right. yeah, I definitely was like insecure. And I don't know how to like, I'm eating a peanut butter sandwich. Sorry, I hate that when people do this. I just like don't know how to handle my insecurity because I'm like, no, I miss him so much. I can't say, but he's like work. I'm like so irrational. It's ridiculous. Do you get more irrational when you're feeling just like tired? I get more irrational if I've had 12 hours of sleep. I mean, I'm an insane human being. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, long I distance is really hard too, though, to be totally honest. Oh, it's honest. so hard. I mean, it's the, it's the hardest thing in the world because it's like sometimes just having the person physically next to you is all yeah. you need. And um, time zone stuff can be tough. I think. Well, yeah, I mean, he's like six hours ahead of me right now. Yeah. So what time is it there? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's 930 at night there. Right. <sighs> yeah, that's very different. Well, don't <laughs> don't get worked up about it now. Um, Too late. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for listening. And we should we should wrap it up and then record our intro. Oh, yeah. Also, I am in, if this comes out, I am in Boston today. I'm at Laugh Boston from Thursday to Saturday. So go to laughboston.com to get tickets. Please come see me. Someone said they're bringing me cannoli. I can't wait. Please do. There's great cannoli in Boston, and Boston's really, really, um, Boston is a fun city. Thank you, guys. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.